Good morning, friends. We are doing a day in the life, a day in the life of Jay Morrell walking across the kitchen, huh? A day in the life of Jay Morrell doing all the things. I'm going to put that there right now, not showing you myself, looking for the coffee cup. So, yes, day in the life of mom of nine with eight at home full time still. And what else do I do? Full-time working mom, homeschool mom, uh, hobby homesteading mama, all the things. And it is a Monday here. We are going to get this day and this week going. We know what we got to start the day with. So usually in the mornings, I go, one of the things I've been doing recently is making my coffee and then taking it back. Oh shoot, look what I just did. Pay attention, Jay Morrell, that's because I'm filming too. Okay, I'm gonna get a towel, sling water everywhere, that's what I do. Anyway, in the mornings, um, recently, let's see, I think that's my alarm going off. Huh, so many noises going on in the house, okay. I've been taking my coffee back and I get Tobin up and I nurse him back in my room because he's a year. So he's at that age of, uh, you know, not paying attention to nursing and doing everything else okay okay got my my alarm off but uh this is a little kid let me show you what what i wake up to in the morning so this is a uh, human body an anatomy kit the kids were going through it here last night before bed they left it there and i thought that's okay because that's a good way to start the day as well so they think that is just fascinating thought it was cute how they have everything lined up uh but yeah daniel and amelia were working through this quite a bit last evening so i guess they're going to start the day with it today then we got travis's flow hive in the mail i don't have the lights on in here yet so we'll we'll flip everything on but i think that's all the parts for it pretty cool so going on the project list and then a lot of canning Oh, good morning, Jan. A lot of canning's been going on. This is uh, 28 jars because, and I needed to go get two more, three more lids from downstairs, but didn't need to do it last night. So this is 28 jars. I was talking to uh, Jessica over at Three Rivers Homestead, and she was telling me for her beams. Now, she said she has videos on this. I haven't actually gone over and watched her videos. I'm sure they're wonderful. I was chatting with her over on Instagram, and she said she does her beans about three quarters of the way, and then she adds in a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, fills the rest with water, let them soak overnight. She said she drains them, adds in more water, and cans them from there. So I have my two Presto canners upstairs. Of course, I mean, I just, <laughs> when I get kitchen projects going, there's, I mean, how, how do we even move and function here, right? I mean, things, yes. Come on, new kitchen. Anyway, my two Presto canners hold. Um, sorry, it's the, the sound of my people there with that coffee being percolated. The canners hold seven quart jars each. So that's where I thought, well, if I do both canners twice today, then, yay, I will have these beans done. And it did... Um, Boy, I'm trying to think how many. Maybe I had 20 pounds in here or so. It did quite a bit. So I'm going to keep, this is a five-gallon bucket. I'm going to keep um, working, working on these canning projects. And then, yay, we got a banana refill yesterday. And I feel like the clutter, the clutter is deep and wide in here. There's, there's my canners for nowhere else to stack them, really, when they're upstairs. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to film a all-day deep clean declutter with me video so that'll be coming up here too but just so many things that need my attention in the house and then we got our sourdough projects going on this has been my uh, fun you know people will ask Jim what do you what do you do for fun so right now I'm getting back into all these fun what I call uh, hobby homesteading projects Obviously, anyone can do sourdough anywhere, but it was on my hobby homesteading list. So we got this that we're growing. And then to keep things balanced, <laughs> so my uh, husband and I, woo, hello, coffee maker. We are going out to, oh my, you're loud. Okay, you done? My well, husband and I are going out to dinner tonight, so to keep things balanced. Uh, we have some sloppy joes left from yesterday. And then when I was doing some things in the pantry last night, I saw these seven boxes of macaroni and I thought, okay, the kids, this is like, uh, 
the the best dinner out ever they <laughs> they love the the creamy mac and cheese and get it i don't know three times a year so there you go kids it'll be a, a fun night and i'll have one of them make it and if you hear any whistling in the background those are turkeys we got turkeys brooding in the basement and what else do we have six ducks and six more uh little little hens they were a type of breed, I think they were called, what were they even called? Hmm. I'll get it here in a minute. It was like a, we'll say it was a blued barbed rock, which we always love the barbed rocks. Excuse me, gonna yell again. Anyway, it was a type that you can tell uh, the gender based on their um, feather colors or pattern from birth. So that's cool, we've never had any like that. Anyway, and six ducks and 12 turkeys, and the turkeys are whistling. So, I wasn't sure exactly. I was thinking, uh, well, we didn't brood anything last year. Last year, all of our, a uh, bunch of our chickens and our ducks did their own brooding and hatched their own babies. So, that was a fun experience to watch. Sorry, getting out on my coffee gear and trying to ignore things because uh, <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow I will tackle the, the things that have grown here recently I'm getting my coffee creamer anyway we uh lot the mamas the mamas did the hatching last year so this year um i'm using the building i was using for brooding um towards the end of 2020 there for hay and i don't know i just felt like i couldn't brood in the room in my basement for some reason. Now that coffee really is full. Come on, Jay Morrell. I was feeling like I couldn't brood until I got the hay out of that building. And then I was like, wait a minute, lots of people brood chicks in the house. I know that's sad, a little bit of coffee had to go. It was a sacrifice for the rest of the cup. Uh, and I've brooded chicks in the house before. I don't know why, you know, sometimes you just get something in your head. So I, it's convenient to, to just have them in a dedicated building. But anyway, got a detractor supply a lot, resisted a bunch. And the other day when we had to go in for some more grain for our calf, I, uh, let's see if I can put my coffee things in and talk at the same time. Okay, there we go. I knew we had resisted long enough and I knew it was time for the kids to have fun brooding some more little critters. So again, six ducks, six heads, and 12 turkeys. And I've been having fun with that. We had a, I've, been, I've had a good run with our goose. We've had him for over two years. And the kids raised him from a little hatchling. We also got an incubator, so I think it will incubate some for uh, meat birds and such as the summer goes on. It's just all coming together, so that is nice. Okay, so good morning. I'm gonna take this coffee now and go nurse my baby and get moving from there. Alrighty, so proven. Mama doesn't always get ready. First thing in the morning, right? Um, anyway, just got a phone call this morning. Was not on the to-do list, but the kids said we would love to do that. So we're going to add this to the little uh, oh, hobby homestead project list. I got a phone call from the same gentleman that we uh, get our cow milk from, that we're feeding the calf with. And he has a neighbor who has a mama goat, that might be my message back, who um, had twins and has rejected one of the babies. It's five days old and they have been bottle feeding it and now they're looking for a home for it. Uh, anyway, they don't, they don't have time to bottle feed and that's, that's okay. I've asked the kids if they would like to add a bottle fed baby goat to uh, the fun projects going on and they without a doubt are ecstatic. They would love to. Um, lots of, no, we've never done a bottle fed baby goat. Our baby goats have been fed by their mamas before. So we are bottle feeding the calf. With baby goats, of course, goat milk is best, but there are folks when they can't have goat milk 
for excess goat milk, they put the baby goats on raw cow milk and there are baby goats who do just fine on that. It's um, supposed to be better than the powdered milk replacer. Okay, okay. So, all that to say, we are going to pick up this five day old baby goat this morning. My life on the farm preference is we could do everything possible for this baby goat and maybe it just may not make it. We have a vet, the vet comes out, the vet helps us with things, but that is life on the farm. Just a reality of sometimes you can do everything you can do and that's just how it goes. Also, this baby goat during some time in season may not live on our little happy homestead forever, just like this family has one that they're given to another family if they need it. Uh, there could be different cir circumstances or situations with this particular goat that it may be with us for a season, and then it may not be here anymore, and that's farm and life, and that's okay. I'm gonna get another pan for the rest of these sausages. I'm doing hard boiled eggs, and I set this box of sausages out a few days ago to defrost. I'm like, I need to do that, so that's gonna be breakfast. Uh, then we need to, it looks kind of rainy, we need to flip into, um, which it's, shoot, if it's rainy, because I had stuff I wanted to do this afternoon. I'm just gonna hold these sandwiches and talk to you for a minute, or sausages. Um, we need to do read alouds and table work. I was hoping that this afternoon to get outside and work on a bunch of projects because that's my fun time. Um, we'll see. We'll now work in the ba the baby goat's not too far away. Everything's local to us, which I love. Um, we will go get the goat and uh, see how this day unfolds. sourdough it's talking to us huh plan is with this sourdough I'm gonna do the artisan bread pretty much a no need bread maybe tomorrow I do have a funnel in the dishwasher this will be scary to watch but I, think I might, might outgrow my jars here today which is cool Alrighty, so breakfast is done and working on these beans. But anyway, we're going to do uh, read alouds now and homeschool time and all of those things. Alright, so actually I am setting my timer because I have a chiropractor appointment this afternoon and a massage. Uh, anyway, that uh, ma mama's, mama's body needs help, so we help mama's body setting my timer um because we are doing read alouds kids are working on all kinds of legos and different little projects going on here and they will bring her art to the table here in a few minutes tobin's working on a graham cracker aren't you tobin uh we've just the slowest read aloud um train we are on but we just keep moving forward and we have had seasons where we're finishing, you know, one to two chapter books a week, and then sometimes we have seasons where it seems like it's one or two books a month, but it's better than nothing because we enjoy this time. It is precious to this mama, so we're going to get going, and I'm just keeping my timer going for me since Travis is home, even if I have to go out for a little bit, um, Dad's still here to take over. So anyway, read aloud time, yes. Yeah. And then this, this was a Lego Forge set you got for Christmas, isn't it? Yeah. You got your little blacksmith guy. Yeah. Very nice. I very want nice. that for, for my I know. Thing. It's a nice one, isn't it? <laughs> Everybody. Daniel, you got your ship and your dinosaurs? Mm -hmm. And Oh, and your tanks? Nice. And Benjamin, what are you working on over there? Gabriel's Legos. Oh, you're doing Gabriel's Legos. Yeah. And Amelia, what are you working on? I'm, bu I'm working on building a farmhouse. Very I'm nice. Like very appropriate. Tank. And we're waiting on the the goat call. We I got a call this morning, but we haven't heard back. So I was thinking about it. If I get the call back about the baby goat pickup, that might get 
tack onto me running out to the chiropractor this afternoon. The uh, massage, I've been doing the deep tissue massages ever since I've had Tobin, healing my body from that. And for, and for extra fun, since September, basically right after I had my right kidney procedure, my left sciatic nerve has been giving me a fit. It's fine during the day, because I'm walking and moving a lot, but at night when I sleep, it's just absolutely awful. So, <laughs> part of my, I, I have exercises I'm doing with that. If you're a sciatic nerve expert, I've got, uh, I'll take any other tips if you've had experiences with it. When I was pregnant with Gabriel, I had issues with my right sciatic nerve and I went to physical therapy for that. So, I've been working with actually two different chiropractors and I've added in these massages and uh, we're trying to get through it. So, it's been a bit though, been dealing with it. One, one, more, one more thing on my mama dealing with stuff list. Uh, exactly, Tobin. Okay, so now that we've talked about my sciatic nerve, we'll get ready. Chapter 11, The Unwelcome Fellow Traveler. When Shasta went through the gate, he found a slope of grass and a little heather running up before him to some trees. He had nothing to think about now and no plans to make. He had only to run, and that was quite enough, and his limbs were shaking with a terrible stitch. So we got about two chapters of our current Narnia book done. Took a little bit over an hour with kids and life and interruptions and blocks and questions and conversation and all that. That's also why some read-alouds go slower, and that's okay, because that's life. We enjoy it. We will get through it. So now I am heating up Sloppy Joe's for lunch. We are sweeping and wiping down the table and such and I'm going to serve lunch while kids get started on book work and some days we eat lunch while we're working some days they eat lunch while we're reading just depends on the day that's how it's going for this day alrighty here's a plate for a teen it's sloppy joes and some corn and some cucumbers still on top of the beans we'll get to that at some point Hopefully, or maybe I'm gonna circle around this for a few days. Anyway, that's uh, what we're working with with lunch is the Sloppy Joe's corn and cucumbers. So if you wonder what I'm doing here with this corn, my friend Amy Roberts had a podcast come out in recent months called How to Meal Plan Like Your Grandma Did. And she is also recently one of my Ninja Mom experts over in my large family table community. And she did a video for us over there also on how to meal plan like your grandma did. And then I had Amy, uh, I'm, I'm still looking at you, I'm just also dealing with this corn. Then I had Amy do a live call with me for the members and one of the gold nugget tips that she said in the live call that she does is she keeps a mason jar in her freezer and as when she is done with little odds and ends with meals, like if she's got a cup of corn left, maybe a few spoonfuls of peas, a couple green beans, just any odds and ends. Once it seems like folks are pretty done with them, she puts them into this jar. And then when the jar is full, she takes that jar. Uh, I don't know, maybe she adds a little ground beef with it or something. And she uses instant mashed potatoes and some cheese. Anyway, she does a shepherd's pie with all these various vegetable odds and ends. And I thought that that was a fantastic trick there. So I'm gonna try it. And of course you can do your mashed potatoes any way you wanna do your mashed potatoes. And I'm just gonna see here over, whoop, whoop, over the next, uh, will it be a few days or a week? <laughs> see how long it takes. Uh, but this was probably more of a cup and a half. So we had this, let me think now. Saturday night, uh, I made four pounds of frozen corn. And then with lunch yesterday, which was Sloppy Joe's in the slow cooker when we got home from church, I heated up this corn again. And then today, Monday, third day, I heated up it a third time uh, for kiddos to have along with lunch. And this is what's left. I figure day three, we're probably pretty, <laughs> pretty done on corn. So I'm gonna try Amy's trick. So you go to raisingarrows.net is Amy's site. She also has a podcast, you can find it over there. And then look for her podcast on how to meal plan like your grandma did. She's got lots of great tips with that. I know, the depths of my freezer. Tomorrow, my freezer and refrigerator are gonna get a good clean out when I have my cleaning day. But we're just gonna give this a try and uh, see how it goes. 
So I feel like I have a problem with my beans. And so this is yet again me saying, don't follow me for candid advice, but you can definitely follow me for candid adventures. So Jessica over at Three Rivers, Rivers Homestead, she told me to fill the jars a third of the way with beans. And I sure thought I was filling them a third of the way with beans. Um, you know, they were about to there last night, rest of the way with water. Well, you see what happened is, I think my third was actually half. <laughs> Something happened because I don't have uh, any, any water headroom there like I should. So, yeah, my little bean experiment continues. So what I'm going to do is I'm still going to can them all, but once I'm done pouring the liquid off of these, I'm then going to uh, take some of the extra beans out and just fill them in a bowl, and those will be the next round. And I'm going to keep on trucking like this. I seem to have got myself in some bean drama. It just uh, keeps not going well for me with these beans. I did broth the other day and it went very well. This is why people practice. This is me practicing. This is me digging beans out of this can because now they've all wedged together. Okay, so here's what I think I'm doing. I have a couple a couple things working against me right now, mainly time. Um, I have to leave for my chiropractor appointment and stuff in like 40 minutes. And if I had my jars perfect and ready to go, which obviously that is not what's happening, uh, it takes 90 minutes once the pressure builds up. That can be an hour and 45 minutes or so if we're also including the time to build up the pressure. So I'm just continuing to work on my bean mess I have now made. Uh, when I started this video, actually last night at 11.30 at night, I joyfully <laughs> got these jars ready, I thought, and I was just gonna pick it back up this morning. I'm telling you this, why am I telling you this? Uh, things don't always go as planned. J. Merle's not perfect. We certainly have big mess ups here too. But we're also going to deal with it, and it's going to be great when it's done. We have to work through it, though, right? So, 
Anywho, my beans um, have jammed themselves up on the bottom of the jars as well. So, yeah. Yeah, so I think, I don't know what I think I'm doing right now. Step one is I'm getting these beans out of the jar. I was trying to make a nice uh, day in the life video, but this afternoon I feel like it's becoming a look at Jamarel's big <laughs> bean mess video. I will say, now I know I've mentioned Jessica over on Three Rivers Homestead multiple times. This is not Jessica's fault, okay? This is Jamarel's fault, obviously. I, I have a problem that I have made. Uh, she is an expert level canner and homesteader and encourager and a wonderful Titus II mama that has a heart to help all kinds of mamas. So if you haven't seen her yet, please go check her out. And please follow the directions on her videos. Oh, I've almost got all these out. Um, and I watched her bean video today. I talked to her personally and then watched her bean video. But again, I think I went wrong by obviously putting too much in the jars. I have no video proof to show you what they looked like last night, but uh, they looked like half beans, half water, and the directions were for a third beans, the rest water. But I didn't think it was much of a problem. And it is a problem. I've now made this mess and I've got to leave. Now I've got to leave in 20 minutes. I just keep working through these beans as I'm able. And now I have this huge pot of beans. Hi. I'm going to go get my two fish in the fan. Okay, that's fine. Even if these jars are ready, they would need 90 minutes. The afternoon is zooming by. I will not give up and never try another project again, but right now it's feeling that way. What I've been trying to say is, I'm not gonna have time to process them before I have to go anyway. And then when I get home, I'm sure there's gonna, it can't, basically canning time is done for the day. What I thought was gonna be my canning time, gone. Candy so, time. canning, not candy, candy time. Yeah, candy time and candy time. I thought I was gonna do two, two loads and two canners start in the morning have all day but now i'm left with <laughs> a very embarrassingly big pot of beans i think what's going to end up happening is i'm going to put these beans in the refrigerator i guess because they've been soaked and i don't have time to deal with them anymore today and tomorrow morning we got the goat call on this goat we thought we were taking in today. Now we're gonna pick her up tomorrow morning. And what else in life? I got other things happening for today. Okay, friends, so I don't know exactly <laughs> what good uh, life lessons we can have here with Jamarel's failed bean canning experiment. And that was my Facebook message, not yours, haha. Uh, maybe the lesson here is, hey, don't hide in the kitchen and fill jars late at night. Um, I really did have fun doing it. I've also realized today, maybe it's just a cooking failure day, but you know, I'm doing doing new things and, uh, and liking it. And I guess as long as I'm happy in my heart while I'm doing it, it's okay. Even with my sourdough starter, I was talking to my one friend who's done a lot more sourdough than I have. And she was like, oh, Jay Morell, you don't need three things of sourdough starter. And she's got 10 kids. And, uh, you know, I only have nine and only have eight at home and only feed 11 people every day. So what what experience do I have with sourdough starter or anything really? Haha. <laughs> so um, I have an abundance of starter I need to discard a bunch of that we probably have enough for our sourdough pancakes with discard now i'm not going to give up though so maybe that can be part of our lesson today i've put this time into this i thought it was going to go well it has obviously not been going well but i'm working through it and i'm not giving up can can i just preach that to myself um, i'm not going to be able to get to these beans today as i was telling you a little earlier and they're going to have to wait for tomorrow, but 
we'll get there. There's always hope. <laughs> I don't know in this video if you're going to see the outcome of these beans. You'll have to stay tuned because it may be in another video or maybe in this one. We'll just have to see. I know I'm, again, I've got to leave for my doctor's appointment soon. And I was thinking in my head, well, I'm going to be really close to my favorite thrift store which was also not on today's list. Uh, but school is done. Kitchen experiments are coming to an end. Dinner is done because the Sloppy Joes. And then if they decide to have some macaroni, there you go. And then what else? Travis and I are gonna go to dinner tonight and probably Lowe's. But I'm thinking Mama might need a therapeutic run into the thrift store. Although the thrift store may not be open by the time I get out. So, a therapeutic thought. <laughs> so these beans uh, packed hard at the bottom. Didn't get enough water around them. Definitely think I was cross-eyed at midnight. But even still, these little experiments bring me joy. And to me, again, when folks ask me, Jamrell, do you have a hobby? Well, these kind of things feel like a fun hobby to me. Uh, learning things, doing new things, seeing what works. Obviously, I learned a lesson today in something that doesn't work, and that's okay. And also what's frustrating, let's hear Jim Rolls after your frustration list. Um, I washed all these jars and stuff last night and got them all ready and pretty and... Yeah, it's okay. So now I'm looking for like, uh, would it be survival mode or... <laughs> Recalibrating, recalibrating, new goals. So I think I'm getting most of these beans out now. I need to leave in like five minutes. That really, really what I should be doing right now is getting my shoes on and getting my van. But I feel like I can't leave these beans here. So, and you know, all the times I'm not filming, there's kids in life and stuff we are doing here. So, okay. Graciously, these beans are mostly coming out. This is a ridiculous amount of beans. I went to get in my van really quick to make it on time. My van is dead. So now I'm driving the big, big old family van, but I'm gonna make it on time. Oh yes, I am. That's my timer. Look at this, we beat the timer, ha. Huh? My timer on when I needed to leave. Okay, stupid too. doing it. Okay, okay, Mama, Mama's better now. She worked a lot on my neck and my shoulders. She just asked me, today was only a half hour massage therapy session and it does feel like therapy. My other ones coming up this month are a whole hour and I had a whole hour one last week. So, Yay for hurting bodies. I am very thrilled with this lady. She's she's a new one for me uh, So I'm gonna drive home now Let's see kind of check in with where everyone is I'll show you the dirt We've been scooping and some other projects going on and then uh, Ma and Paul we're gonna go to Lowe's go to dinner and if you've been wondering what's been happening on the Mega Mama kitchen, I'll show you what Travis is working on. I let him work on this all day. You got a whole day of working, didn't you? Half, Half a day. He's doing things. All right, so he said for me to show you this first. You got any words on this? I see wires tied up like a ponytail. There's a box with lots of breakers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. More wires coming out. This is for the refrigerator, right? Yeah. yeah. Look at this. So profesh. Nice. Nice wire. Another box. You got them numbered for the stove. Another box. Another box. Another box. For everyone wondering about outlets, another box. There's some wires coming out. You got them numbered, and then you hadn't got this far yet. Right. I, I see a pattern. The on the outside too. Oh, and the, yeah. The outside the door. Outside the door? Is that for the pool? No, it's for a circle. On the outside of the house? 
like a fancy house. The forest house had those. That was nice. We've got a few here. Okay, another another box coming along there. Okay, and then outside I'll show you some more projects. So yeah, these beds are not in perfect shape. There's a fall from a uh, fall, yeah, pumpkin from last fall. Anyway, what I'm trying to show you in these beds is that all this mulch Travis got from our own mulch and just dumped it all around for me last night. He had a, got a scoop going. He had to repair. That's what he spent a lot of time last week doing is his tractor. Scoop tractor thing he needed repaired. So I'm going to rake all this out. Of course I thought I'd get to it today. Ha ha. Uh, but here we are. And the piles go all the way down, all the way around the house. So we will be getting to that. And then we have all of these tubs that have been made with love by zion thank you zion these are the four by two tubs and then way down yonder you might see the raised bed project coming together more also happy thoughts look at this tulips are coming up nice liam is transplanted we got a lot of daffodils in the woods so you want to have some of your own flowers you said right mm -hmm. so he is working on transplanting daffodils and we have some that go up there but yeah you can you can use that that's fine okay back this way anyway talk to another friend of mine this afternoon and she has hatching eggs so we will be picking up two dozen hatching eggs from her this weekend at some point and i'll show you also this was Travis's victory with getting his scoop going again. Got a whole pile of mulchy earth there. Yay. So then over here, now, you know, I did the eight beds and I said, that's all I'm going to do. And so then I ordered eight more. <laughs> so now what made me feel okay about it is that my friend Becky over on Acre Homestead, we all know Becky. And if you don't know Becky, go find Becky. So Becky has, what was it? I think she has 16 raised beds that are 16 by 4 and it's for two people and I thought okay Jay Morrell you can't just have eight beds that are eight by four <laughs> so I ordered eight more so now I will have 16 beds that are only eight by four they're much bigger than the beds I had right and then I have the eight four by twos the only thing I didn't notice with these was the color difference like these are gray and these are silver. So I can't have, you know, all the gray beds and the silver beds. I'm gonna have to alternate the colors and make some sort of a pattern. <laughs> it's just just the way it's gonna have to be. Um, so let's see. Yeah, and these aren't like staked in the ground or anything yet. So as Zion is building these for me on his time off today, he's just setting them here and we'll have to move them around. But this whole space here, gets a ton of uh, sunshine of course not today but it is a is a good garden area we're gonna put our little turkey jokers there in that tractor here in a few weeks and get those going outside as well okay so now mom and dad are going to go out on the town i need to get some more buckets from lowe's and like i said tractor supply to get the goat bottle and dinner out somewhere my mom is here she is feeding tobin right now and we're doing it all the tractor supply signs right all my ducks in a row oh my goodness that's cute all of it and a goose just decorate the whole kitchen tractor supply that's my theme yep i'm telling you the new kitchen we will just come here to shop won't we okay see what we need Okay, I wasn't getting pictures, but now look at this. What? Will I be sad? Alrighty, we went to Lowe's. Now we were at Cracker Barrel, and I just love the little tea pod. I know it's only the equivalent of one cup of tea, but I always like to get that here. Well, friends, that was yesterday. So let's see. Once we got home, what even happened? Well, checked back in with the kids and, and everything and everybody. Then as a, a working mama as I am, I laid in the bed, nursed my baby, had uh, an hour and 30 minute video. I had to watch through the edits on. My kid, my kitty's crying at me because I usually give him a piece of lunch meat in the mornings and all I had was cheese and he looked at that cheese like, I don't want no stink cheese. <laughs> anyway, uh, watch that video. 
got a video up on Facebook. Basically, I laid in bed but worked from my phone for like two or three hours and also got a video, that same video after I watched the edits uploading on YouTube. So anyway, that's how I got some mama work time in last night. When we got home after that long full day, I laid in my bed and worked. And so probably went to bed about midnight or midnight 30. And now today is a brand new day. Today it's raining. That's okay. I'm gonna conquer those beans today and do all the things. And I'm gonna film another video for you all about those adventures. So I'll see you real soon with another brand new video. Thanks for hanging out. Bye-bye.